So why do you go to sleep? We increase GABA and gallonin from that VLPO. This is like a sledgehammer. We're turning all the wakefulness apparatus off, and you're going to sleep. So when you go to sleep, the sedating chemicals should go up. That's what you see here. Your wakefulness chemical, that's the other backup generator, orexin hypocretin, it lowers. You want the wakefulness chemicals to lower. So throughout the night, this is the kind of thing you want to see. And you're like, okay, Schwartz, so I'm not aroused and I'm asleep, but why do we go light sleep, deep sleep, light sleep, deep sleep? Why the heck would that happen? This is where it gets fun. Acetylcholine comes in, right? So notice when you're at the bottom of deep sleep and things are being restorative, your brain says, hey, we got to get some dreaming in. You get little puffs of acetylcholine that drives you out of light sleep. That's a stimulating chemical. So the stimulating chemical goes down and puffs up, so you go into dreaming sleep. So you have a pacemaker at night, light sleep, deep sleep. Look at your other monoamines, dopamine, norepi. They drive you out of deep sleep back to light sleep. So you have some static factors where things are always high or low, but your stimulating neurotransmitters actually go up and down all night. Now, if you look at a grid like this, what if I put you on an SSRI or SNRI? Are those little puffs that drive you into light sleep little puffs now? They are big puffs. So if I drive up your serotonin and norepinephrine, you get driven into light sleep a lot more. Many of our antidepressants ruin deep sleep. Right? You might get eight hours of sleep, your depression lifted, but it's not restorative sleep, you're still tired, is that a side effect of my drug, or, or did I ruin your sleep with my therapeutic treatment for depression? So some of the drugs we give can fix this, and some of the drugs we give can hurt this.